Hi everyone, I am Dr. Yoga Priya, MBBS MD Biochemistry. I am currently working as an assistant professor in MMCRI and as a consultant biochemist in Medlife Labs. I am also a faculty of uh, biochemistry in Concept Need PG Coaching Center. So to start with, I am going to discuss a few clinical case scenarios. So today our topic of discussion is on alcaptonuria. So the given scenario is a 45 year old woman presents with progressive palmoplantar nose and pinna pigmentation and the urine sample collected from the patient for Benedict's test changes to black in the supernant layer and the test gives greenish brown precipitate. So what is your most probable diagnosis? This includes option A phenylketonuria, option B alcaptonuria, option C tyrosinemia type 2 and option D arginino-succinic acid urea. So the key points to arrive at the diagnosis includes pigmentation and the end result of Benedict's test and also the change in the color of urine in the supernant layer. So the correct answer is option B, alcaptonuria. What is alcaptonuria? So it is the first detected inborn error of metabolism and it is always inherited in an autosomal recessive pattern. So it is one among a Garrod's tetrod. So what is Garrod's tetrod is the next high yielding point. This includes alcaptonuria albinism, essential pentosuria and cystinuria. So totally three ureas. So what is the biochemical defect in alcaptonuria? This is mainly due to deficiency of the enzyme homogentesic acid oxidase which leads to accumulation of the intermediate that is homogentesate and this is normally seen in the catabolism of phenylalanine and tyrosine. So this is the catabolic pathway. Here you can see how phenylalanine is getting converted to tyrosine and then to 4 hydroxy phenyl pyruvate that is para hydroxy phenyl pyruvate which then get converted to homogentesate and then to malyl acetoacetate. So we have to focus on the third and the fourth step. So the converting enzyme in the third step is 4 hydroxy phenyl pyruvate hydroxylase which is a dioxygenase enzyme and the fourth step where homogentesate is getting converted to malleal acetoacetate is by homogentesic acid oxidase which is again a dioxygenase enzyme. So in alcaptonuria what happens? The enzyme catalyzing the fourth step is deficient. So the intermediate homogentesate is getting accumulated. So the accumulated homogentesic acid they take an alternate route or alternate pathway. That is they undergo polymerization where this homogentesic acid with the help of the enzyme polyphenol oxidase get converted to benzoquinone acetate which then again polymerizes to alcaptan bodies that has the black color which is the main reason for pigmentation wherever it get deposited. Next is about the clinical features of alcaptanuria. So these patients they lead a normal life in their early decades and all the clinical manifestation sets in only in their 30s and 40s. But the only manifestation that is seen in case of children is blackening or darkening of urine. That is when the collected urine sample when it is allowed to stand for some time that urine turns alkaline which is the main reason for this darkening. Another accelerating or triggering factors includes exposure to sunlight and also reaction with atmospheric oxygen. So immediately after collecting the urine sample we have to analyze it. It will be in same color as that of a normal person sample. But within few minutes the reaction sets in and within few hours you can see complete darkening of urine. So this first image shows the urine sample collected from a normal person and the next one shows the urine sample from alcaptan urea patient. So the first bottle image is taken immediately after collection and the second one is after few hours of collection where the darkening sets in completely. And in this image you can see within few minutes the darkening starts appearing from top and it proceeds to bottom and within two hours you can see the complete darkening of given sample. And the other clinical features includes deposition of this alcaptan bodies in the intervertebral disc and also in the cartilages of nose and pinna of ear which results in the pigmentation which is called as ochronosis and it's the most common manifestation in case of adults. And these alcaptan bodies they also get deposited over the connective tissue of joint cavities resulting in arthritis. So in this picture you can see the pigmentation over the fingers and also in the outer side of the ears and also in the eyes okay and even this pigmentation can happen in the sclera of eyes and a peculiar feature is there is no mental retardation and the x-ray feature shows parrot beak appearance. So this is all about ochronosis here you can see this alcaptan body deposition in the intervertebral disc and uh, this one in the sclera of the eyes and 
next in the pinna of ear and also the cartilage of nose so next is about the laboratory diagnosis of alkaptonuria so first we have to inspect the given patient sample which is normal in color immediately after collection and uh, within few minutes the darkening or blackening sets in from the topmost layer and it progresses to the bottom and the next important test is benedict's test which is positive in case of alkaptonuria because homogentesic acid is a reducing agent so in this picture the right side you can see a positive test that is it gives a greenish brown precipitate and other than that ferric chloride test and silver nitrate test both will be positive in case of alkaptan urea so regarding the treatment modality it is always symptomatic and we have to advise the patient about dietary restriction of phenylalanine and tyrosine because they are the precursors for formation of this homogentesic acid and one more important drug named as nitisinone which focus on inhibiting the enzyme para hydroxy phenyl pyruvate hydroxylase in order to reduce the formation of homogentesic acid because it inhibits the third step enzyme thereby reducing the formation of homogentesic acid so how we can rule out other options so option a is phenyl ketonuria so this is mainly due to deficiency of phenyl alanine hydroxylase and the clinical manifestation includes central nervous system features like mental retardation agitation hyperactivity tremors and convulsions so all these are mainly due to interference of this phenyl alanine with neurotransmitter synthesis and also hypopigmentation is seen here due to inhibition of the enzyme tyrosinase so mental retardation is not seen in alkaptonuria and there will be pigmentation in alkaptonuria that's how this option a is excluded so next one is option c tyrosinemia type 2 so this is mainly due to deficiency of enzyme tyrosine transaminase and here the clinical manifestation includes mental retardation and eye features and there will be increased urinary excretion of tyrosine and tyramine and because of mental retardation seen in tyrosinemia type 2 which is not reported in alkaptonuria the option c is also ruled out and the final option is option d arginine succinic acid urea which is a urea cycle disorder and this is mainly due to deficiency of enzyme arginine succinate lyase so due to this enzyme deficiency all the previous substrates they will get accumulated and ammonia level seems to be elevated in the csf and also in the blood so because of this it results in hyperammonemia and elevated arginine succinate level in csf and they get excreted in urine and the pathognomonic feature of this arginine succinic acid urea is friable tufted hair which is called as trichorhexis nodosa so the answer for this discussion is alkaptan urea so the reference for this discussion is taken from harper and also from lippincott thank you and do subscribe my youtube channel for more video discussion and any doubt related to the topic discussed can be written in the comment section happy learning